Welcome to IT Emotion, where we make autonomous IT entertaining and informative. My name is Sunjog. And I'm Josh, and we're your hosts. Today we have a special guest for you. He's the host of the AWS podcast, Becoming Awesome, and he works as a senior account executive at AWS. Everybody give it up for our guy named Gordy Flowers. Thank you. Thank you. Happy to be here, guys. Thanks for having me. <laughs> we're happy to have you. Hey, Gordy, you know, Tell us a little bit about yourself. You seem like such an interesting, eclectic person. I appreciate that. Well, like I said, I'm uh, yeah, by day senior account executive with AWS, so that's that's a lot of fun. But I'm also very, I've been very fortunate to have several side projects and programs that I work on, including the Becoming Awesome podcast coming soon to Twitch uh, in 2023. So excited to talk about it. All right, Gordy, so we're going to do a little icebreaker, and we like to call this Would You Rather. All right. All right, so the first question is, would you rather eat a delicious meal at a hole-in-the-wall restaurant or a fine dining restaurant? You know, I'm a, I'm a hole-in-the-wall guy. Give me the hole-in-the-wall, the place that uh, all the locals know about. You know, I love meeting the people that started the restaurant. You know, they, the they authenticity, have, authenticity. They've got a lot of passion. You know, they're going to tell you what what's good. They're going to tell you, you know, what uh, what you need to stay away from. <laughs> I love fine dining too, but I, I'm I'm basic. So give me some, uh, give me a hole in the wall. I'll tell you, hole in the wall restaurants sometimes have food you can't get anywhere else, right? Exactly. Exactly. And it, it may be just a slice of pizza, but it's just different than anywhere else. 100%. Oh yeah, give me that. Those are. That. Those are all the best, not always the best for you, but those are always the best tasting exactly. restaurants. Better than fine dining. Usually the, the fine dining ones, the portions are so small. Exactly. Yeah. And you're paying a lot for that small portion. Yeah. yeah. Where, yeah. where in the hole in the wall, they're going to bring you something that's not on the menu. Hey, you yeah. know. Yeah. Yeah. Give yeah. me those fried noodles. Tell me what you think about that. Yeah. Exactly. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. You know. All right. Another question for you. Um, would you ra rather coach a season of youth basketball or season tickets to the Crimson Tide? football games that's another tough one um, a little bit of backstory I'm a, I'm a University of Alabama graduate like you know and uh, roll tide uh, <laughs> roll tide. so I would definitely uh, in a different part of my life go with the season tickets uh, but I, I love coaching kids I, I, my, my nine-year-old plays basketball I'm the coach and and uh, you know it's fun being around that age group you learn a lot and seeing the world from their eyes and uh, you know hey if you if you want to see some offense, uh, come check out the Kangaroos in Arlington. You know, we're, we're playing Let's ball. Go. Over there. Yeah, good time. It's a, the premier team in Arlington, Virginia, right? Yeah, you know, I'm not going to go on record saying that, but I, <laughs> <laughs> we have fun. We have fun, for sure. Yeah, absolutely. And actually, some of our executives have been doing a ton of interviews with uh, some of these Roll Tide folks. Actually, uh, Brian Branch, um, the safety. Um, Great player. For, yeah, Crimson yeah, Tide. He, he'll be, uh, he'll be a, a wealthy man this time next year. <laughs> <laughs> we'll see if we can get him on a podcast. Yeah. Well, no. hey, there, you <laughs> go. there you go. All right. So uh, next question. If you're going to karaoke, would you rather belt out I Will Always Love You by Whitney Houston or My Heart Will Go On by Celine Dion? <laughs> wow. If I can do either one of those songs justice, I'm winning. Uh, but <laughs> I, I, Give me Whitney Houston. Uh, I love Celine Dion, but give me Whitney Houston, uh, you know, in my opinion, best best singer one of the best singers of all time oh i totally agree um i couldn't agree more um i think you know over the years though she kind of she had her ups yeah, and downs there's right? no question there's <laughs> a lot many, of authenticity in right? that story yeah um but anywho uh next question we got for you is would you rather make more money or have more impact on this world think of like united nations sustainable development goals or advocacy work what means more to you yeah, that's, a, that's another easy one. I'd rather make the impact. Uh, to me, you know, I've uh, been fortunate in my life to have lots of opportunities and, and be taught on how to give back and how to serve and how to do those types of things. So that's that's a big part of my life. You know, we're, we're, my wife and I are trying to instill that in our kids and, and make an impact any way we can. Absolutely. I love that. I love that. I'm a I'm a big uh, fan fan of actually uh, giving back as well. Uh, I do that voluntarily uh, for a couple of local nonprofits, grassroots. Um, you know, I, I heard you're quite the the advocate in general. Can you tell us a little bit about some of the work that you've you you promote and talk about and and yeah. and done? I'm involved with a lot of organizations. You know, I've, I've uh, for a long time worked with uh, Big Brothers, Big Sisters, and you know some of the big ones, Salvation Army, my family and I. Recently moved to Northern Virginia from Phoenix, and uh, you know every every Thanksgiving, every Christmas, we go downtown and get about 50 meals loaded into our car and just deliver them to people in the city 
on those days, uh, usually people that are sick and shut in, nursing homes, people that don't have anybody. It's a really cool way to be out there. And it, the first time I did it was very, I was kind of skeptical. Like, you know, I don't right. know if people want to see me coming in their house. Right. But man, I tell you, the food is just a part of the, the experience. You get there, you get to know these people, you get to put humanize people in different situations. And so for me, that's been a lot of fun. A couple of days ago, my uh, colleagues and I uh, went to uh, Southeast DC. We work with a, a, a nonprofit called Martha's Table. And uh, they specialize in education, nutrition, and, and just overall well-being. And this project specifically was about uh, giving fresh produce and, and veggies and fruits to people in what are called food deserts, places where there's no there's no Trader Joe's, sure, there's no Whole Foods, you know, there's not even the big grocery stores that you know community stores that we're used to seeing. Right. It's all Seven Elevens and Seven, stuff like exactly. that. Exactly, corner stores right. and fast food restaurants. And so, you know, as a result of that, you know, the nutrition isn't there isn't the best right? right and so one of the things they do is once a once a week or maybe once a month they they bag up all this fresh produce from these local farmers and they just have it available for these oh, parents awesome. to come and get it yeah so my team and i we helped make over uh, over 150 bags for these families they come and pick up their kids and just get a, a free bag you know with some even had like a recipe card in there to help them with some some ideas so that's some stuff that we're doing it's uh it's been really exciting that's so awesome and i think that that's so um really great that you're kind of giving giving back in in any way that you possibly can that's a part of that's a part of like your growth as a person yeah mm -hmm. absolutely yeah you know yeah, find, finding ways to serve other people help exactly. them help them achieve, you know, what they need or get, or get just the bare minimums in yeah. their lives, right? Some people just don't have exactly what right. they want and need. That's exactly right. Absolutely. Yeah, for sure. So, so tell us a little bit about kind of your career journey as it relates to what you do at, at AWS and also, um, you know, a little bit about this podcast too. Yeah. Yeah, no. So my career, you know, I, I graduated school and jumped right into finance. You know, I worked for a big, big bank. Uh, I was uh, doing auto loans for people that didn't have great credit. So that was fun. And uh, I eventually evolved into doing personal finance. So I became a financial advisor and a financial planner, which was really cool. A way to, you know, kind of help, you know, myself. I learned a lot of things that I, I didn't learn, you know, in school, being in personal finance, but I helped my family and friends. And it really helped me to kind of get out and, and be around people more, which was awesome. Sure. And uh, I made the transition to tech about six or seven years ago. And, uh, you know, it's been amazing for me. It's kind of taken all the, the experiences that I've had in finance and in, in, in the rest of my life and given me an opportunity to, to, to make a difference, uh, you know, that way as well. So it's been fun. Sure. And is there kind of a, a cultural difference, you notice, between like the finance world and the tech world that's meaningful wow. to you? Oh, absolutely. <laughs> I'm so glad you asked that. So, you know, I'll tell you, when I was in finance, I, uh, I got to a point where I was I was having success. I mean doing really well uh you know was, you know doing the president's club and all that stuff i was nice. doing really well i had a friend of mine in tech and he said hey man you know we're we're he worked at a, a big tech company he said hey we're starting a new team i think you'd be a good fit i know you're a finance guy but just come check it out and i didn't want to be there i'm like you know this is a good friend of mine and i'm going to do him a favor and go show up so i get to i get to the office i look around there's tvs everywhere there's snacks we're in we're in Arizona and Phoenix, and I mean, people are wearing shorts and flip flops, and they're yeah, all smiling. I'm like, what's happening here? Welcome to engineering. <laughs> what's happening here? <laughs> no, no one's wearing suits and ties, and That's we're right. not we're not you know afraid to laugh and have fun. And so that was a, a game changer for me. I sat through that interview, and you know, I just realized this is where I need to be. Yeah. And so it's a huge culture, and, and I don't know how things are now, but in my experience in finance, it's definitely a little bit more old school. Right. Definitely a lot more. Um, you know, regulate it, right? Sure. It's just, uh, those things Suit have to and tie, be buttoned up. Absolutely. You know, there's a lot of oversight, which there should be because you're, yeah. you're dealing with people's future and their finances. That's right. But uh, on the tech side, more creativity is what I noticed. More, yeah. more freedom to imagine and to make the difference in, a, in, in those types of things that didn't really exist in my experience in finance. It's funny that you mentioned that because it's very similar actually in like a sales pit as well. Mm -hmm. So yeah. I've, I, I was in sales for a number of years in my career and selling IT, right? Yeah. Um, and it's very buttoned up, suit and tie, or at least yeah. was before, right? Yeah. Now now it's a little bit different, especially yeah. post-pandemic. It's right. a totally different world. Yeah. But 
Um, but it is interesting because um, it's it's different the the polar difference between engineering and product and how kind of that culture exists exactly. as well as the cultures as, as in other parts of the business That's finance right. sales um, they they carry themselves differently they they think yeah. differently yes sir. That's um, exactly right they right. different things right like, right. Yeah. But they all serve for the greater good. And that's part of the thing that we kind of need to solve at times, right? Because the cultures are different, because the mindsets are different. I agree. Bridging the gaps. I agree. You know, you find out there's more that you have in common than you would otherwise think, right? Yeah. And yeah, so you're talking about a lot of it. You know, we, we have what we have what we're good at. We know what we're good at. You know, you're a great engineer. You're a great sales guy. Sure. But we all go to lunch together. We find out that we right. like the same music. Our kids go you know, the same age or, you know, we're into the same types of things. That's and right. I think that's where the growth is. And a lot of the smaller, a lot of companies are figuring it out. Like you mentioned, post pandemic or maybe just in general, uh, you know, with having more collaborative efforts and less siloed approaches to getting business done. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. I mean, and that kind of goes into some of the inclusivity stuff that, that you, you, you've you also yeah. brought up before. It's it's important to kind of have a diverse community that are uh, working together, finding finding things to celebrate. Yeah. Right. Together. Right. I, I, I quote I quote this. Uh, so don't copy it. All right. <laughs> um, but we we relate to each other by celebrating our differences. Yeah. Okay. Truly, and I like and that. and, I, and we kind of do that in certain ways already by each eating each other's cultural foods, mm-hmm. right? That like we go out to a restaurant, we're experiencing another culture right then and there, right? Good point. Um, and now we live in this global world. Uh, eventually, perhaps the metaverse, right? Yeah. Um, which really? then then all of a sudden we're all everywhere. Geographic yes. geographics don't really matter. That's right. <laughs> yeah, I think that's a good thing. You know, I mean, that, like I said, it's you, you learn so much from being around other people and people that have other experiences. I mean, you know, obviously you have your non-negotiables, whatever those are. Sure. But, uh, you know, in, in my experience, you know, having people from diverse backgrounds and, and just people that think differently than you do, you know, being around people that see the world maybe just a little bit different than you do. I think you'd be surprised at what you learn. Yeah. yeah, I mean, to me, that's one of the most valuable things. You you meet someone who, who has like just a very different perspective mm-hmm. on the world than mm-hmm. everyone else that you talk to. Exactly. They're the ones who give you the ideas where you, you really stop and think, oh, man, you know, I really didn't consider that before. Exactly. I agree with that 100%. You know, again, that's just where the growth is. Empathy can change the world, guys. Yes. I'm convinced. Yeah, absolutely. Yes. I'm convinced. <laughs> I am with you. I'm with you. Yeah. Um, yeah. I mean, it, it, it's, it's important, right? You just go out and get to know people and when you... You know, it, it's so easy to look and, and like you were saying, when you're going out and doing service work for people mm-hmm. and bringing up stuff, you had that perspective of, you know, are they going to want me there? You've got, kind of got this right. mental image and then you go oh, yeah. meet the person, they become a human to you. Absolutely. And you find out, you know, they're a war veteran, you yeah. know, they were, uh, you know, their their mother, their father, yes. they're, you know, an out of work artist, like whatever it is. Right. And there's like a whole story there. It's a rich tapestry. Exactly. And, and then yeah. it becomes a whole different thing. Exactly. Yeah. I agree with that. Everybody has a story to your point. And, you know, it's, you know, I had that kind of aha moment when that, when that happened with me, I'm just thinking how many more experiences like this am I missing? Because in my mind, it's not going to be what I think it's going to be, or it's right. going to be something totally different than what it actually is. Sure. You know? And it just takes a little bit of courage, I guess, and stepping out and, you know, not to say that things always work out, but I, I'm convinced like you that empathy and, and, and just effort make a big difference. Absolutely. Absolutely. And I, and I think it's like important for us to recognize that, you know, especially nowadays, because we're all kind of mixing cultures and there's just a lot of, it's okay to be two things. Yeah. Right. You can, you can be two. That part. Uh, you know, we're not, we're not, can't be pigeonholed into being identified as one stereotypical thing anymore. Yes. <clears throat> and we need to learn to be okay with that. That is correct. I think that's a big, that. that's a big thing, you know, for a yeah. lot of us to understand, because you're right. We're either right or left. We're red or blue. We're this or that. Right. And in reality, you're right. What if I am more than one? What if, what if I like this? Uh-huh. And I kind of like that too. Yeah. You know, what if, what if I like a hole in the wall, but I can, I eat a fancy. fancy. <laughs> you like Celine if, Dion and you like Whitney Houston. What if I like yeah. both? I'll take both of those, right? Yeah, yeah. So I think there's something to be said. It doesn't have to be one or the other. It's, everything's not black and white, right? There's yeah. a lot of gray. There's a lot of, 
you know, so I, I agree. Good, good, yeah. good points. Uh, absolutely. And, and you know, just kind of uh, shifting gears just, just a little bit, learning a little bit more about your account management roles in the past. Um, you know, from that perspective, what are typical responsibilities as it relates to contributing to larger strategic business goals, like customer retention, expansion, upsell, things like you that? You know, that's a good question. Um, you know, I think in, in a lot of, or in my experience, I'll say, you know, a lot of my career has shifted from just pure sales to more relationship management. A lot of what I do now is like project management. And to your point, you know, retention is a big thing. Everybody, you know, every company wants to hold on to who they have. You want to grow those those accounts, those people that those customers that Expansions, you have. Expansions, right? Expansion. You want to you want to acquire some of those prospects, right? It's that's just the name of the game. Yeah. But in reality, most consumers have options, right? You know, yeah. depending on what their product or service is. I can go with you or I can go with someone else, you know, and it's all about really how you make me feel that relationship, and if you, that relationship. And, and, and if you're meeting the need, I mean, if we're going to say table stakes or you can do what I'm, I'm looking for you to do for me. Yeah. The rest of it is how does Josh make me feel when I talk to son, you know, he he brightens my day. Right. You know, no pun intended. <laughs> that. that was pretty good. I didn't mean to do that. Yes. <laughs> um, so I just. <laughs> So I think that, you know, how you make people feel is really the, the lasting impression. And so for me, that, to answer your question, you know, it's gone a lot from, uh, you know, transactional type sales. Like, sure. you know, I want to hit my number. Of course I do. But, you know, for what I've noticed is over time is those relationships with people. And, and no matter how you do it, a lot of times it's over Zoom. But, you know, yeah. if now yeah. coming out of the pandemic, we can get out and meet people and see them face to face. Those relationships translate into those results. You know, 100%. those relationships yeah. translate into those KPIs and those metrics that you're looking for. Yeah. And so that authenticity to me translates and, and really sets the table for success. And yeah. uh, you mentioned customer success. You mentioned account management. You could probably put that in, you know, there's a lot of different uh, roles that that could fill. So that that's that's how I see it. Yeah, I mean, I, I think that's true of, of any relationship, right? Yeah. You know, everything you said about wanting to retain, make sure you're meeting the people's needs, it applies just as much to employees as it does to customers. Exactly. Yeah. You know, you want, to retain your, you want to retain your best employees. You yes. want to get them right to, to a point where they're happy with what they're doing Absolutely. and they're productive. And, Absolutely. You can almost make the argument that, you know, if you're running a company, depending on the size, that your employees are your customers. Too. So, I mean, you've yeah. got in, in customers that are, you know, helping with the bottom line. But to, to, to Josh's point, you want to keep those employees. You know, what happens if you lose an employee? How long does it take to get somebody to replace exactly a high performing employee? How much money does that cost? So, you know, you're right. You know, reinvesting that time, that effort money into those employees and really letting them know you care in some kind of way you know and, well the, the main thing is is knowing how they feel cared right i, I think there's something there, like there. called like the five languages of love right yeah. and that just like <laughs> thinking about that kind of concept a little exactly. bit it's like we all have different wants and needs and expectations when we join a company and put our effort efforts forward, we want to either be maybe recognized in certain ways or even just a little pat on the back of like, hey, good job today, because you really went when, you know, the full nine, right? You, exactly. you really did it. Um, that's really important. Uh, I think that we need to also recognize for, for customer relationships, it's so important to also just meet them as people. Yeah. Yeah. I think part of it is like we get behind a pane of glass and we're just like okay this ticket came in from this customer right and like we have to but we have to really see okay no there's a person behind Take that a ticket step back. yeah right like it's yeah no absolutely i mean i've got probably the most washington dc story possible I, <laughs> I i met someone who worked for an advocacy organization and she was telling me about it and i was like yeah i don't know about that maybe there's side effects if we do that and, you know, she just was like sitting up straight and she had like an answer for everything. And I had I'd probably talked to her for 20 or 30 minutes before finally she started talking like a person yeah. and not like a policy <laughs> yeah. representative. Yeah. You right. Know? That's right. That's right. I think that's where it is, though. You know, connecting that human, those dots to yeah. a human being yeah. working backwards from that ticket. You're right. You know, we can look at it as a transaction. This is what I do for my job. But, you know, this this means something to them, you know, maybe yeah. this, you know, what is that? Can I quantify it? Maybe yeah. with money and time or, or, you know, this must be really hard for you. Obviously, you, you this is a high severity. So exactly. whatever this is for you. And right. I'm sure this translates into a lot of lost, a lot of anxiety for you. You know, how can we help? 
And and it's a lot of times they're just looking for someone that cares. Thank you. Yeah. A lot of times it's just like, hey, do you even care? Because yeah. and if you're and, and usually as an account guy, it's like you're like, OK, yeah, I care. So I'm going to stay on this call <laughs> until right. whenever I need to get off, because yeah. the other right people are, people are on the call, whether it's an engineer or it's kind of someone else who can make that decision. Yeah. Right. I agree. Um, but that's a huge uh, that's a huge job. Sure is. Sure is. I agree. I mean, I, you know, it's people can tell. They can tell if you care. Yeah. And, and so many of us have insecurities and sometimes people just mm -hmm. need to know mm -hmm. they're on the right track. Yeah, right? exactly. So, sometimes it's just that basic. Like you're doing a good job with this. Don't worry about it. Like <laughs> all all customers when they're new yeah. have trouble with that yeah. and, and you'll learn it. Or, Absolutely. you know, it's, it's just, it, you know, we want to make it as easy for customers to do whatever we're doing we can. But People just need to know, like, yeah, you're on track. You're doing well. That's a great point. I agree with that 100%. Yeah. Absolutely. So uh, what types of technologies have you supported and, and what do you sell? Yeah, it's a good question. I spent a lot of time uh, with storage and compute type things. Um, but I'll tell you, the biggest the biggest projects that we work on are migrations. You know, customers that are sure. uh, on premises and uh, they're moving to the cloud, right? And so it's uh, that's, that's pretty much the name of the game. And you see it in every industry, every vertical. Uh, it's... Uh, you know, when I started in tech, you know, someone told me like, you're either in the cloud, you're moving to the cloud or you're thinking about it. And if you're not, <laughs> you're getting left behind. You know, that's just the reality of where we are. Or and, your head's in the clouds. Uh, oh, <laughs> very nice. Very nice. Um, but but that's just kind of the name of the game. Now, there are some laggers, there are some industries, there are some companies that by nature, it's just going to take them a little bit longer. Sure. I had a customer uh, in the Southeast United States that's a stove company. They make old school iron stoves. So like, you know, you can- Like in a cabin? Yeah, yeah, log cabins, yeah. man. You know, and then, <laughs> but then, you know, they can do things outside in your yard and that type of thing. And they are very, you know, very traditional in the way they do things. You'd be surprised at how, you know, they approach some of the things that seem to have been modernized over time yeah. but in having a conversation with some of the, the the folks there that make the decisions they know it's coming yeah you know? and it's just a matter of getting that that inertia just saying all right you know listen if i'm the only one that's gonna say we we're, we need to make this move i'm gonna keep doing it until i'm blue in the face because yeah. it's it's that or we're gonna get left behind Absolutely. And, um, you know, just a little bit curious because you, you've you have so much career experience. How how has that changed over time? I know you've already talked about how it was kind of like selling, selling, and now it's kind of relationship management. But what were some key takeaways that you've had in these different roles as you continue to journey in your career? I think we kind of talked about a little bit earlier, too. And it's just that finding what really matters, you know, people. Um, they can tell if you're not authentic, you know, and if you've got if you're if you're in sales or if you're doing any type of, uh, you know, customer facing role, people can tell if you've got their best interests. Yeah. Are you listening to me? Are you reading from a script? You know, is this something that means something to you? Because, you know, I said something and like to your point and, you know, I, I can't tell that you're even listening to me, you know, yeah, I can, right, you right. know, and so th those are the types of things that I think matter. You know, people want to know that you have the competencies, you have the ability to meet their needs with the products, with the service. I mean, again, those are table stakes. But beyond that, I, I can probably get that two or three different places. Let me see how Josh is going to make me feel today, you know, or if he's going to you know, provide me, you know, that, hey, you're on the right. You're on the right track. You know, right. I talk to a lot of other people. They run into similar instances that you run into. Here's how we can help, you know, sure. type of thing. So just assurance that, you know, you're on the right track, you know, hey, we can, we'll do our best to meet that need, to fill that gap. And if we can't, hey, we're going to, if it's okay, we're going to be honest with you about that. Yeah. You know, people want to know that you can take care of business and they want to know that you're, you're being, you're being honest with them. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. absolutely. Change. So are there any examples of times you've had some, you know, big customer issues you've been able to solve? Yeah, yeah. There's a few. I, you know, I think about one example. Is it a nightmare story? Oh, I, I've got a fair share of nightmares. <laughs> <laughs> we'll, we'll, keep, we'll make this one a good one. Though. Okay. But uh, no, there's there's a company that I was trying to reach out to at, at a previous employer, and um, you know, it's one of those companies where you know, on, on the website they have a blog and they have all these. Uh, you know, they're very social, you know, you go to social media, there, there's news there, there's blogs, they're very transparent. And it's great for someone who's who's trying to find out more about 
a company or, or individual before you reach out. You know, it's just the way you prospect and you kind of immerse yourself in in the whole, uh, you know, just what, what it would be like to be in their customer shoes, basically. Sure. So I learned quite a bit and I knew that the product or the, and the service that my company offered was a perfect fit. And I came in hot like that. I found a guy, you know, went through LinkedIn and all these, these other places and I found a guy and I'm just like, hey, I'm Gordy. Here's how we're going to help, you know, all this kind of stuff. And the guy just, I got nothing. I mean, absolutely nothing. He ghosted <laughs> me like he should have for months. But I just, I was convinced, you know, I, this is one of those where I'm just like, this is going to help. I can yeah. see, I can clearly see through your blog on your website, yeah. on your social media, where the issues are here. Yeah. And I know we can help. Yeah. And so I kept looking. Persistent. And so I did. <laughs> A lot of failure. But I, I looked, I looked, you know, like I said, I did some digging and I kind of found, uh, you know, like one of the guys I wanted to, to, to reach out to. You know, he's a Harry Potter guy. And I'll be honest, I know Harry Potter, but I'm not, I'm not deep in there. So I, sure. I immerse myself, though. Sure. I got in there. And so I, I use a different approach. So I sent an email and just kind of, you know, put some Harry Potter kind of themes in there and said, hey, <laughs> hey, hey, John, you know, put something about the, this new. Uh, it was like a something new at Disneyland you know, with Harry Potter or something yeah. like that, a theme park. And uh, and I put that in there and said, hey, you know, I, Feel free to ignore this, but you know, I just thought, you know, someone like you who's in a Harry Potter would be into, you know, XYZ, this new ride over sure. here. Sure. And I mean, he came back and said, Whoa, that was good. <laughs> that was good. I got 15 minutes for you. And, that's you know, right. And so, like, to me, you know, just again, trying to, and that's just one example. There's been a ton of failures, and that, that one was a failure for about sure. nine, three months. But I, I, but I think, you know, just, uh, you know, again, goes back to doing the homework, doing the work, being dedicated. And, and you know, and that was just a case where I knew this would be a fit. You know, right. it's not yeah. always the case. Right, right. Yeah. But, but so, it sounds like you feel like failure is like a key to your success. I think so. Hundred percent. I mean, right? That's I think just it is for most. Get there. Yeah. yeah. I mean, it's it's a it's the one of the best teachers, right? You know, you it, you can't be afraid to fail either. Exactly. Because it's your biggest learning opportunity. One hundred percent. You know, I, I, I mean, I agree a hundred percent. You know, and I mean, that's just one of those things where you learn how to you learn how to fail and don't take it personally, which is easy to do. Those are words that are easy to say. It's hard to live that when you're when that's your job. Yeah. Is to, like, make something of these conversations and you're getting nothing you, you, you know it, well it psychologically takes you can also kind of change your mind and be like i'm going to use this as motivation to try even harder yeah. right yeah. i mean it's like a lot of competitors do that michael That's jordan right. has that sometimes it turns into a complex though so it's yeah. like it's like finding that line of like That's where right. you can work it with you but also yeah. it don't doesn't want to get too obsessed with making that happen you know <laughs> you cross the line there but but you're right There's, you, you and, know it, yeah. it, it's really interesting because you you saw the value in understanding people and, and really what you did was take the time to learn about that person. Mm -hmm. That person, how you had that opportunity was through the internet. Yeah. That's all data, Yeah, right? It's exactly. just like you you really leveraged yeah. data in, in certain ways and, and really how important is that? Talk to us about how important data reliability is to you, especially for these scenarios, right? Yeah. It's just... Um, you know, had you a misstepped and he's not a Harry Potter fan, <laughs> right? It's a great question. Uh, what, what makes data reliable is, you know, just in the, in the, you know, it's reliable. It's, uh, you know, I think to, it's a good question because data is everywhere. Every, every school, every company, we, there's data everywhere. And it's a matter of using that data to your advantage, using those insights to then monetize them or learn from them so that you can be more agile and, and quicker with making mm -hmm. decisions. And so to me, when I think about clean data, you know, it's, it's, you know, maybe three things. It needs to be consistent, it needs to be accurate, and it needs to be relevant to the story that yes. you're telling, right? So if I, you know, let's say there's a CFO and he says, you know, son, I want to see uh, year over year revenue of a specific product or service. And so, you know, we've got all this data. We've got multiple disparate data sources. You know, it's uh, say we've got annual revenue here. We've got monthly revenue here. We've got uh, daily run rate here. All that needs to speak to each other. Yeah. And to make sense in order to get that end result. So to me, you know, the data is reliable when it's, you know, when it's it's properly you, you know what I mean? Like Absolutely. It, it has to talk Connected. to each other. Right. To, to get to get to that end result. Absolutely. Yeah. And it, one one aspect that you you kind of touch the side of is 
you know, there's sort of like the very numerical data, right? Your your over year revenue, mm-hmm. your you know queries per second, whatever. Yeah. But there's also sort of another side of data that's maybe a little bit less numerically focused. Mm-hmm. Hey, can, you, can you talk a little bit about like how you balance those two in different audiences? It's a great point. Um, I think it depends on the audience. So, I, you know, when I think about <laughs> I, I, before I got into my current role, I worked for a data and analytics company, and that's all we did. And so one of the, the sayings that I heard all the time from the engineers was friends don't let other friends use pie charts. You know, like, you know, <laughs> but at the end of the day, it's all about that <laughs> yes, one. So, but at the end of the day, it's really about telling the story, you know, using data to tell a story. So if, you know, you've got really technical users and you've got business users and, you know, we, we have eight, nine year old kids. So it's like, can I take this super complex concept and through the magic of data visualization, can I make it to where a nine year old can understand it? And maybe more relevant, a business user can understand it, can sure. consume, you know, a dashboard or something that's, you know, some of the the big, the biggest, brightest minds, in my opinion, you know, they take that same type of complex information and they let their share and all those shareholders know what the what the results of all that is in a very plain way, in a very Absolutely. you know uh, elementary school level way of communicating and say, all right, here's a here's a here's a lot of info. Let's clean that up for you. Yeah. And yeah. here's basically what we're trying to say. You know, have you, have you met Josh? He does that really well. <laughs> I can, I, I, yeah, man, I'm, I'm so glad. You know, I can tell by the question he asked. You know? yeah. um, so I think that's just the name of the game. Yeah. Yeah. So how do you um, how do you get good value from this data and, and leveraging it in the cloud? Yeah. Um, you know, there there's value in using that data correctly, you know, using insights from the data. I, I think we talked about um, you know, some companies I work with, their whole goal of using data that they have is to monetize it. You know, right. If you, most of us have smartphones and tablets right now, you know, depending on which one you have, if it's Sunday, you'll get a report that says, hey, it looks like your screen time's down 25 percent this week. Yeah. All it is is data that's turned into a way that now you can, if you want, use that information. Somebody would say, I don't I don't care. I don't change your behavior or, or hey, yeah. you know what? I'm glad you, I'm glad I learned that, you know, because I don't want to spend more than a couple hours on the sure. Tablet. Or, you know, it's my job to be on this thing. I need to step it up a notch and do, you know, do more right. than I did two weeks ago. <laughs> but I see it pop up and I'm like, man, I need to read more books, you know, exactly. especially if it's, if it's like you you've go. been up by two, 20 minutes a day. I'm like, man, yeah. 20 minutes I could have been doing something else, right? Exactly. It's true. And that's yeah. exactly the, that's what we're talking about. So yeah. taking data that's, that's there in your device. And now it's in a, in a, in a way that you can consume it and it's yeah. really quick and it's like a ping, like, Hey, just so you know, yeah. here's where you are. And so to me, that's uh that's a big part of it. Yeah, it's funny because actually I don't think social media uh, outlets want that either. They don't want you to know how many hours they spend. Right, you're right. <laughs> you spend that's on their platform. That's, that's, it. A, that's why they invented infinite scrolling. Exactly. It's like, well, I'm not at the bottom yet. I just keep going. <laughs> they I got it all that. figured out. That is really true. But yeah, that's really the name of it. You know, taking that taking that data that already exists and we're going to make it digestible and and usable so someone can make decisions based off of it. Yeah. Yeah. So does do you, do you feel like uh, from a from a work perspective at least or or maybe from a personal perspective the the cloud plays into getting good data of that sort? I mean, I think so. Um, you know, and, and good data, you know, we can have a conversation about what that means. But, you know, it's just um, <laughs> it's just, you know, kind of like we're talking about data that's used to, to tell the story to whatever story we're trying to tell. And, uh, you know, we can clean it up. We can. It's got to be again. It's got to be reliable. It's got to be it's got to be relevant to what we're talking about. You know, it's yeah. You know, if I can just throw some numbers at you and doesn't mean anything to you. I mean, you know, I just did all that work for Absolutely. nothing. You're not the you're yeah. not the audience or it's not the right data for you. And so, um, yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. Well, Gordy, um, can you provide some of our listeners some key tips for uh, few, you know account executives out there and customer success managers in technology as they kind of journey through their career? Are there, there are a couple of tips that you have as you've yeah. kind of had your experiences. What's worked for me anyway is, uh, you know, being curious, man, you got to yeah. be curious. Yes. Uh, and it's it sounds easy, but, you know, most of us uh, have questions, have dreams, have thoughts. And, you know, a lot of times we're our own worst enemy. I know I am. You know, I, I don't, I don't yeah. jump out there when I, I think about something. So ask questions, man. Be curious, you know, be like a kid, you know, be 
the more questions you ask, if you're if you get in trouble for asking questions where you are, you might not be in the right place. You want to be somewhere where you can learn, you know, uh, attach yourself to a mentor or someone that is doing what you want to do or that can point you in the right direction. You know, it's really just about getting out there, putting yourself out there being vulnerable and 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 you know again we're going to say table stakes as you're working you, as yeah. long as you're doing the work yeah. you've got the competencies you've got the will uh you know everything else is really just a matter of putting yourself out there and i think that just can go a long way and we're talking about those two careers but that may be in just about every in walk every, of life you know right. i think that's just kind of some of the keys to success and longevity in, in my opinion Absolutely. Yeah. And, you know, it's it's funny because, Josh, you and I talked about it a little bit. And it's so important for us to, to think about how how we approach work. Just because it's work doesn't mean it needs to be serious. Right. right. Like you can you can go into work and kind of treat it like play. Yeah. yeah. And that's what I like to do. I That's how I actually get the most value out of like my that. work. Yeah. yeah. You, um, you go you go find work that resonates with you and a good group of people you yes. want to go see and you're going to have a good time. Exactly. Not every day is going to be great, right? I right. mean, yeah. there there are rain clouds some days for but, sure. But you're going to have more good days than bad days if you're with a good group and you're working towards a common goal and, I agree. and it's something you like. Yeah, and you feel like you're contributing in some way or that you know you're making progress. You can see the light. You can know, you can see opportunities coming your way no matter whatever that means for you. Yeah. I think that's kind of where it is. You know, like if you feel like you're stuck, I mean, that's just tough. It's tough to get over. It's tough. And you're not into your point you're not with a group that compliments you and that's the other thing is culture matters right and sometimes it's difficult because the culture is not kind of it it doesn't have that embedded in there where everybody has that mentality and a lot of people show up to work because it's work and they need to do it right but like kind of being that naive person in the group that's just not afraid to uh feel that way will allow others to perhaps even loosen up and feel that way i think you're right it kind of unlocks it a little bit yeah yeah absolutely no that's that's the name of the game i mean it's like you're saying gordy right you know having that curiosity if you can develop a culture where that's allowed Mm -hmm. encouraged you know, if you're in a position to hire people, you hire people that yeah. are curious. Yep. And that's for me one of the key criteria. Agreed. If I find someone who's cr- curious, they're going to be a better engineer. They're going to be a better QA. They're going to be a better exactly. product owner, and whatever it is, because they're going to go look a level deeper because they it's are. interesting. Yep. Yeah. And that's what you really want is that kind of like level of interest, that mm-hmm. that ability to have teamwork, complement each other's strengths and weaknesses. Yep. Agree. And then we all learn. We yeah. all learn because someone's curious. You know, uh-huh. we want to find out. You know, I don't know if we all are singing from the same book and we all, you know, agree on every single thing. That's I don't know. You know, like it, it just we need to have right. different opinions so we can open our minds a little bit more and see the different outlets or perspectives yep. in which we can go about things. Yep. Um, you know, it's that's part of the reason why I stay at companies. It's like, are they going to let me kind of go off and, and learn more? Are they going to encourage that kind of uh, culture? Yeah. Um, yeah, that's what I love about here, right? Yeah. <laughs> Honestly, get to do opportunities to do stuff like podcasts. Right? Exactly, yeah, yeah. <laughs> absolutely. Um, but we still have full time jobs too, and yeah. we we put in the extra work because we're passionate about it, and exactly. and we like you know the people that we work with. Yep. We still even to this day have like these happy hours with some of our alumni groups. Oh, that's cool. Yeah, they some of them had been gone for years, but it's just we just cared about each other every once in a while. Talk we'll, about culture. Talk about culture. That's it right there. You know, so it, it extends beyond the walls of the building. And it's kind of exactly. like it's kind of the people. The people are the culture. You that's know, no right. Where you are. So that's, that's, that's really right. Cool. I like it. All right. Well, uh, Gordy, thank you so much for joining us here today. And how can uh, the audience kind of learn a little bit more about you, your podcast, and and what you do at AWS? Yeah, so I'm on LinkedIn, at Gordy Flowers. Uh, Twitter, same thing, at Gordy Flowers. Uh, and uh, Twitch, more information coming soon uh, about the podcast. So that, should be, uh, that should be available pretty soon. Excellent. Well, thank you so much uh, for having us today. Thanks, and audience, I hope you guys got some great, valuable information. Everybody give it up again for Gordy Flowers. Let's go. Thanks for listening, everyone. If you've enjoyed this episode, we'd really appreciate you hitting the subscribe button on your favorite podcast app. We're hosted on YouTube, Apple, Spotify, iHeartRadio, Stitcher, and many other podcast platforms. We're adding new podcasts on a regular cadence, and you can also access our podcasts at sciencelogic.com forward slash podcasts.